Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and thank you for tuning in. Hi, Janet. Thank you for hey, Steve. coming up. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well. It's awesome. and yes, thank you. That's good. You're welcome. Um, today, we want to talk about something a little different. I had done a segment a few days back about technology through the years. Well, this one is a little bit maybe similar to that one, but it's also different. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the things that we used to do that may be considered obsolete now, be thanks to internet and, um, you know, cell phones and the way technology has taken over. Um, let's see. Ha Janet, can you think of anything I certainly can. Uh, you know, I was a child of the 60s and a teen, a tween in the early 70s, but high school in the 70s, graduating 76. But mm -hmm. back in the 60s, one of my family's favorite things to do, and it was very inexpensive and it was so fun. We played a game called Twister. Do you remember oh, yeah. Twister? <laughs> Anybody out there uh, remember Twister? If so, comment mm -hmm. below. Mm -hmm. Hours and hours and hours of fun. Basically, it was a mat, a plastic mat, I guess it was plastic, it had these yes. circles on it, red, green, blue. And then it had this like clock thing, which you turned around and it would tell you what position you would, your friends or family would go in. And it was hilarious. And who you could see who's going to hold up the longest in the awkward position, like left foot red, right foot green. It was fun me. It was just so fun. We had a yeah. lot of fun with that. Yeah, I played that a few times. And you, let me just say this, if you're going to play Twister, you better be a contortionist because you get in some weird, you got your hand here and your foot's over there and then you got to take your hand and put it over here. <laughs> if, you, if you didn't have the right balance and the right oh it's a fun one but that one was interesting like i said you need because you got in some weird positions on that game i know exactly um yeah another one that this is a pretty common game we've all played it it's still around today um i used to like to play the old monopoly game not the one you have out now the right. one where you open the board and you get you know, right. actual play money and you get 200 by going by go and you buy your houses, you know, as you get the property. Um, I used to love to play that one with my dad um, and even my the original. Siblings. But I tell you what, that game, if you're not careful, that game could go on for days. Yes. <laughs> From what I understand, there is a short method uh, that you can do. Um, <clears throat> never played it. I think what it is is you're dealt, you know, a certain amount of properties in the very beginning. Oh. And I think what that does is it helps speed up the process a little bit. But well, I've never mean, played anything other than the original. I've only played the original myself. Wow. I think the longest my dad and I ever played a monopoly of course we had to go to bed and go to sleep and wake up the next day and then we continued <laughs> um, i think it went on for about three days oh my that is long <laughs> and of course you know the idea is to buy all the as many properties as you can of course you want to try to get the most expensive ones and you want to try to build hotels on it as quickly as possible so you can make the other ones go bankrupt that's the idea but yeah that, that was a fun one that I used to like to play at home. Another one you might even be, you might even associate. I used to like Scrabble. Oh yeah. Scrabble was great. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's great for your spelling skills, everything. Good strategy. Loved it. Yes, it was. And then if you're not certain of a certain word, if it's valid to be used on the board, you can always go over to the Webster's dictionary and look it up go from there. Yeah, that was a fun one. Um, you know, there's just so many different ones. Uh, you know, I think the of, very good. Uh, the only other thing I was going to say right fast was uh, 
a couple of other ones I used to like to play was one called Shoots and Ladders. Yes, I was going to just mention that. Were you going to mention that? Okay. Yeah. That one, our head was in the same spot. Um, even though this is considered a child's game, I still played it. Candyland. Candyland. Mom walked in the day before my first Holy Communion, which was the day before my birthday uh -huh. at that year. I was in the second grade. She walked in with two games for me, Candyland and Shoots and Ladders. Mm -hmm. that I'll always associate the two. Mm -hmm. They were fun. Oh, yeah. Good children's games. Yes. Mm -hmm. But again, I like I like the old board games. You know, another one that I used to like to play. This is probably one people forgot about. There's one. There was one out there called Boggle, B O G G L E. I remember the name, but what was the object of that game? What it is is I think you had this round thing, and it had a clear dome, and you pressed on it, and certain letters or numbers would pop up, and whatever showed up, oh. you had to. I don't know. It's been a very long time since I played that one. It might have been. Oh. It might have been forty years plus because I was small when that one. Um, Cute. You know, it sounds like another game called Trouble, which had a clear dome and dice in it. Trouble was good. That was good too. Um, Trouble Yahtzee, another one I liked Yahtzee. Uh, did you ever like Connect Four? I heard of it, but I never played it. What it is, is you have red and blue chips. And what it is, is you want to try to connect four of one color. Um, I want to say it's almost like a tic-tac-toe toe type setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, another one I haven't played in 100 years. but Wow. But there is just so many board games. I mean, people so don't. So many. Oh, but people, gosh. I don't think people play board games anymore. Everything now is on the internet. Yeah. Or on a computer. Yes. But there is a difference. And there were also, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just going to say this right here. The internet and computer version, people don't realize that is automated. That That's not a real person you're playing with. So if you lose that game, it's automated to set it. It's automated set up that way to make you lose. Think about that. That's true. That is so true. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember playing like knock hockey, like those knock hockey games with a puck and a stick, and you'd hit the puck across the board and try to get it to hit outside? There was like a hole on each side, sort of like a ping pong, but a table hockey game. Um, I think I know the one you're talking about. <laughs> it's a flat table. Yes. You have a round white, and well, the one I remember is you had a thing that you hit. And yes. You, maybe I'm thinking of air hockey, but the same general idea. Right. It started off prior to air hockey. It was basically, I mean, at least there was a little activity, like physical activity. But the physical activity one that I love, my favorite, this came about middle, late 60s, called footsie. It was this round thing. You hooked it up to your ankle. It had a string with a bell on the end. And you played hop and skip and turn it around in circles and keep skipping around it. And it kept you oh. moving and moving and moving. It was great. Footsie. Oh, footsie. I wonder who remembers footsie. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah. Did you ever have a slinky, Steve? Oh, gosh. this A slinky for a simple, inexpensive toy. That that thing could do so much. I've, I've taken it and gone down steps with it. <laughs> um, I love slinky. I mean, a slinky... I mean, if you think about it, the possibilities are pretty much endless as to what that thing can do. Endless. They had miniature slinky. They had plastic slinky. Yeah. They had the bigger slinky. Bigger. My problem is every time I got it to go down the stairs, for me, Jen, after a while, it would stretch out. It would, like, always stretch out. Or I'd, like, maybe just get too rough with it. And it would, wouldn't it be as normal as it was when you first get it out of the box, you know? No, no, no. But slinkies sure. were fun. I love Yeah, I love they were. Slinkies. Yeah. Yeah, they were. We had um, a lot of good stuff. We did. And then, you know, you got you got more basic games out there. Um, I guess the other one I'm trying to think of, I think, is called Jacks, where you throw the yes. middle and you're supposed to bounce the ball, and when it comes up, you grab and catch the ball. Right. 
That was very popular in the middle, late 50s, but branched off into the early, mid 60s. Yeah, that one was fun. Um, I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of another one that had to do with long colored sticks. I was just going to mention it. Pickup sticks. That's the one. It's in a can that looks like a Pringles potato chip can. That's the one. That's the <laughs> That one, if I remember, you had to go in and meticulously pull one out without touching another one. Oh, that was fun. I would play that for hours. I loved that. That was so fun. So <laughs> did I. And when I think of pickup sticks... It makes me think back to another board game that I know you remember, Operation. Ah, I had it too. <laughs> you had those little thingamajig that you stuck down oh, in wow. there. You, the, you didn't want to touch that metal side or the nose would go red and make a noise. Right, and that was like that buzzer feel to it. Make a buzzer sound and feel, and that nose would get red. Get red. Oh, oh. boy. Do you remember the show, The Adams Family? Yes, I do. Do yeah. you remember Uncle Fester, the character Uncle Fester? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, he used to like to electrify a light bulb, put it in his mouth. They actually sold Uncle Fester light bulbs when I was a kid. It was this automatic thing you'd put in your mouth and light it up. <laughs> I had that, too, naturally. Yeah. yeah. Oh, boy. We had a lot of good stuff. Easy Bake Oven I had. That yeah. was fun. Oh, my gosh. Um, Dad, thank you for all of your wonderful gifts to me. <laughs> you might remember this, and you may remember it from, you know, uh, your daughter. Back in the 1980s, you may or may not remember it. It was a Snoopy toy. It was a Snoopy. It was set up. It, it looked a little bit. It looked. It looked a little bit like a doghouse. It had a, a circle in the middle. It had a crank on it. And what it was is it was a snow cone maker. Oh, I do remember it. Yes, I do. Yes, I had I that. Do. I had Oh, how cute. cute. Yes, your generation. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, well, you're in my daughter's generation, so. Pretty much, yeah. Like I taught I kids years. in your generation. Yeah. You, you guys had those Transformers. Transformers. Uh, another one people forget about is a GoBot. GoBot. G.I. Joe. And the Ninja Turtles. Ninja oh, yeah, Turtles. G.I. Joe. Oh, he was eternally popular, G.I. Joe. He was even in my generation, believe it or not, G.I. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, but let's not forget, I am the generation of He-Man. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> and the Thundercats. And the Thundercats and She-Ra. Of course, that was for girls. and um, Right. And my, my daughter had all those My Little Ponies. Oh, yeah. My Little Pony. Oh, boy. It was My fun. Little Pony. Let's see. You had the Care Bears. You had the Pound Puppies. Pound Puppies. Yeah. Yeah. Those are collectors now. They are. And Pee Wee Herman doll. Oh, had it. I think my daughter went through two of those. Yeah, I know you are, but what am I? I know. I have that. I have that. No, not only that. I used to watch his. Um, I used to watch his TV program. So did he, I. He <laughs> yeah, on Saturday mornings, that and Muppet Babies. Yeah. I mean, oh, what was that other cartoon? Smurfs. Anything Smurfs. related? To Smurfs. The snort. No. It was nice. Nice generation for really those couple of decades had some really awesome toys. Don't forget the snorks. No, I can't. <laughs> S-N-O-R-K-S. -N -O -O oh, yes, yes. Um, wow. I wonder how many people watching can relate to these toys. Let us know. That's what I want to know. Again, I know a lot of them are probably. And, 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 of course, here's another one again. My generation, your daughter's generation. Let's not forget the Cabbage Patch doll. Oh, and you couldn't get away with the fake knockoff one, Steve. No, I you, went that. You, could tell them, <laughs> you had to look, but you could tell them. Apart. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, you can still get a Cabbage Patch today. I'm sure the price is yes. way lower than what it was back in like 1983 or four when it was up. Now, what was the Garbage Pail Kids? Was that a card? Yes, it was. It came in a pack of gum. I had I went through the garbage pail kid phase. I was about ten. Or I old. know. I remember buying them <laughs> for my yeah. daughter. Yeah, yeah. Um, so cute. You had you had some really nasty names for some of those characters. I can't remember. I think you are correct. I think one of them was like 
Large Marge, or am I thinking of Pee Wee? Oh, Lee please don't remind Pitch me that <laughs> that character from that movie. It freaked me out when I saw it on the movie. <laughs> I don't re remember that one. No, that scared adventure, me so yeah. much first time I saw that. Yeah. And my daughter kept rewinding and replaying it. Look, mommy, look. She was laughing and I was crying. Yeah, That's I guess. <laughs> I guess for a kid, it would be a funny thing. Yeah, yeah. she laughed, and I'm like running, like, oh, God, please don't. don't. Not again. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, everything, as far as I'm concerned, give me give me the old-fashioned way. I, I, like to, I like to sit down with my family and have play a board game or, you know, then everything became electronic. Of course, you had electronic games in the 80s. You know, everything became, well, even video games, all you had back in the 80s was um, Activision. You had your Atari 2600. You had Coleco Vision. I think there was one where you had a little white ball that went back and forth. Oh. That's all you had. I think it was called Pong. Right, right. You know, the 80s was kind of the up and coming. You had the Commodore. It was. And I remember my daughter screaming, crying, not screaming and crying, but she wanted a Game Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Nintendo. I remember back when the first Nintendo came out with the with the gun. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, you had coming back to Atari, you had the 2600. You had the 5200, you had the 7800. They come out with different variations. And if I remember correctly, the 7800 uh, Atari would play any of the other video games from the other machines. How do you I think, now that I think back, I think if, if I'm wrong and somebody's an Atari nut, you know, definitely let me know in the comments. But if I remember, that's what I remember back to. Um, yeah. I just I just want to go back to the way things were. I'm I'm used to old board games. I still right. I'm still used to going over taking the record out of the thing, taking it out of the sleeve, putting it on the turntable, dust it off, play it. It's coming that, back, you know, Steve. It's coming back. Well, I lucky me, I held on to my record collection. I still yeah. have I never got rid of it. I still yeah. have my turntable, you know. So that's and, awesome. Uh, I don't know about paying $22 for a vinyl record today. No, no. Listen, you can just go to a Goodwill or a thrift store and find the same exact title. You'll be a surprised at, at like, you know, all right, now, maybe less than t 10 years ago, like now that everybody's on to the, you know, thrift store thing, you couldn't get people into a thrift store 20 years ago sometimes. No. Only the smart people like... <laughs> would go uh, into that. <laughs> oh no, you can go into a thrift store and find a $40 pair of pants for $4 and then turn around and sell it. You can make money on it. Right. Absolutely. Even though, even though that's another topic, but still. Oh, we could do that on another, in a future chat. You know? Okay guys. Well, you heard it here first. Be on the lookout for, <laughs> you know, for that. Never know. Um, again, you know, even, even the subscribers, if they have some ideas or any type of shows that they would like to see us do, me do, let me know. Excellent. It's not that I can't come up with a topic, but it might be something that I or we may slightly overlook. So, Definitely, because we're cr cranking out a lot of shows all the time. Right. And we like to, uh, you know, cover a broad bunch of topics as we can my my channel as you know is mainly about budgeting frugality but i do like incorporate different things a little bit of fun a little bit of sanity that kind of thing you know but mainly it's a uh, all of us to just live life a little better with quick tips i have to say something steve if you don't mind okay um a sweet subscriber uh wanted me to answer an advice question for financials we, I could speak for both of us. Steve and I are not financial advisors. We don't do that. We're just quick tip givers. Anything like that, you need to go to like the professionals, do some research. You might find your answer directly online. And someone who actually is a money coach would be Debbie from the How Debbie Saves channel. So, you know, seek her information out because, you know, she knows her stuff. But mm -hmm. she's a money coach. She knows yeah. where she would be a little more qualified than myself. I'm just a 
you know, gal next door answering a quick tip type thing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely consider, you know, if you have any real money. I mean, I'm I'm decently, you know, well versed, you know, in the financial and um, I would say Debbie and I are pretty almost across the board because we know, you know, she's been in a lot of debt. I know what it's like to be in debt and then, you know, <clears throat> making the right moves, you know, with your with your home and, you know, and lowering your mortgage and things like that. If you know, there's even though, again, this is off topic. If there's anything financial that a person can do to improve or maybe not so much in the now, but if it could, if it helps you five or 10 years down the road, do it, make that change for the better. Right. But I can't get on like my channel and say this, you know, specify and, you know, I cannot give quote, legal advice financial advice no. i am not a financial advisor no neither am I. i'm not legal i'm not financial i'm no. just jan from new york city trying to save a buck here or two and sharing my personal experiences along the way and if it can help you out you know why not right well i can't really think of much more i think we covered it for now I think we did i mean i've you know, again, this was a fun little segment. Like I said, that was technology through the years. It had to do with audio and all that. This is a little bit, this is a little different, but it has to do with technology. And I, and I'm really glad we brought up all those different board games. Like I said, I'm sure we left out a lot of them. I love your, right. Of course we could go on for hours. I love your idea of memory lanes. So this will be going on like maybe as a series in the future, like, touching upon another topic going down memory lane it could it could be i mean um all i gotta do is just um you know think about what other memory lane topic um do do i want do i or we want to discuss um and then we'll make an you know we'll make an arrangement and make all it right. happen um because i mean we're in 2021 i mean when you think about memory lane, you can go back 25 years ago when that's memory lane. That's right. And as an older person, for me, 1999 doesn't seem that long ago. No, for example. It, no it, it was. It was 22 years ago. <laughs> right. Even for me, it doesn't seem like that long ago. But, right. you know, but still. Right. Um, but anyway, I, I, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I want to thank you for coming aboard I, as always oh, i love it me too and uh again i hope you enjoyed this segment as much as we did if you like my channel veteran subscribers thank you a newcomers thank you for subscribing anyone who's passing through considering definitely take a few minutes go back and look at some of my past videos and decide if that's the type of content you want to subscribe to. And if you do, thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Also go over and check Jan, Jan from New York city saves money channel. Again, she said she has to do with budget. Close to 800 videos to check out. Right. So you know, <laughs> definitely go over there and check her out. If you're not a subscriber. To her. Don't you have a really cool, surprise at the end of the show with i most certainly do okay. and um, i want to say bye to everybody and i'm going to close with this this is the big surprise